ब्रह्मचर्य व्रदी दंडी सर्व वेदांत पंडित श्रीमद्विवेक योगी मां प्रचोदयत सर्वदा नमस्ते फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट माय थैंक्स टू आई वाई ए फॉर गिविंग मी दिस वेरी ग्रैंड ऑपरचुनिटी to air my views on the empowerment of women and yoga especially i will start my talk making a very important declaration that i am proud to be a woman and whatever jen mas words i have in future I would like to be born as a woman because understanding the potential of womanhood through the Hindu traditions I have discovered the shortcut to divinity I am proud to belong to a tradition which gave humanity the most beautiful and potent formula madhur devo bhava in which is hidden a dharmic blueprint for the welfare of the entire humanity with the rishis of ancient india i repeat with fullness of heart ya devi sarva bhuteshu मातृपेण संस्थित नमस्त 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 नमो नम इन बिटवीन दीज टू मैग्निफिसेंट डिशन इन द्रम अवर हिंदू ट्रेडिशन लाइ दि ओरिजिन एंड डेवलपमेंट of the wonderful all inclusive hindu spiritual tradition which could conceive of the whole universe as one family vasudeva kudumbagam based on the spiritual solidarity of all that exists in the universe for some life is just a dream for some life human life is to enjoy the material wealth and all that it brings pleasures and so on but for a rare few life is to realize the divinity within and manifest it outside for the welfare of oneself and the humanity for the latter life is a yoga a sadhana of expansion to reach out to the supreme truth empowerment comes naturally to this last group to achieve expansion and move on birds <clears throat> in evolution all yogas are helpful at the most the speed may differ that so that depends again what we call the speed depends on the sincerity and surrender of the person and his or her ability to imbibe the yoga spirit unto oneself and make it part of that person's his or her work love and knowledge 
women in whom the Almighty has implanted the rare ability of nourishing and nurturing another life is the best of God's creations. One of the most magnificent and at the same, same time mysterious. Unfortunately, caught in the purely materialistic distractions, little is she aware today that she has latent within her the fountainhead of truth, the discovery and unfoldment of which can assure not only her own well-being, but of the world around her. Ignorance and neglect of this potential has turned her today into a problem for herself and for the men around her. Is a woman superior to man? Does she have a separate identity? Is she in need of empowerment, emancipation? All these questions are irrelevant once the women discover their true identity and start playing an effective role in transmitting the great spiritual message through their lives to their children and to the entire world community. This is all the more true of Hindu women because in no other spiritual tradition is womanhood endowed with so much of holiness, authority, potency. Yet, sad to say, the Hindu womanhood like its counterpart elsewhere, stands today much discredited. What is this so special about the true womanhood that I am proud of as a Hindu woman, as I said? Right understanding of Hindu womanhood means understanding the grand, universal and highly relevant values of the true Hindu spiritual heritage. The relevance of which for the survival of humanity is becoming increasingly clear day by day. The great Hindu tradition is based on the potential power in the human mind to expand into global awareness, not in physical terms, but spiritually, enfolding within it the three ennobling virtues of love, sacrifice and service. This forms the core of Hindu dharma, Sanatana dharma, which is also based on values of life principles that should govern the unfoldment of one's personality and one's interactions with community and with nature. These are the qualities of life centered in the respect of life in totality. It is a universal level, life in totality, not for humans alone, life in totality. All these and more are naturally and safely deposited in the women. Empowerment or liberation of women should therefore mean developing this awareness and its manifestation in a most effective way, bringing deep spiritual fulfillment within and creating peace and harmony without every being. 
is born with a special part to play in the universal drama of life, whether it is man or woman. That is why Swamiji always says, the potential divinity. Once we are in touch with that, then we will come to know what exactly is the role one has to play. If we ignore this call from within, then naturally life becomes almost meaningless. Now, what is this uniqueness about women? Whenever I talk of women, I emphasize two points, the science of being a woman and the art of being a woman. What is the science? It's not the science we are used to in modern terms, but this science is being deeply rooted in the truth within. It is out of this truth that she has to blow them out. So she must be careful to center her personality in this truth. Probably our spiritual tradition helps a woman to naturally grow into this awareness. When a woman becomes centered in this truth, what we call we can call as the Advaitic, lack lack of separateness, there is nothing separate. She is able to include everything within her. That is how she becomes centered in truth and start growing from there. Then we would find there is an awareness which makes her See, when a woman gets married, she becomes aware of herself. She sees herself in her husband also. Atmaiva. There is no difference between the two. She is able to grow in awareness to include her husband. Similarly, when she becomes mother, it is a spiritual growth a spiritual enhancement of her awareness. Then she becomes one with the children. And in that oneness is present the truth of Advaita. Because unlike a father, when a woman says, it is my son, my daughter, there is a oneness which is very deeply rooted in that truth of oneness. It is she who has conceived and nurtured the child and the, another life within. And this nurturing capacity is something, a special gift which has come to her. So in that way, she becomes an embodiment of truth. That is why probably our great rishis start with their injunction to the homegoing brahmacharis, Matru Devo Bhava. They must recognize all this while in the Gurukula they were learning about this truth, realization of truth, etc. But at home, they are going to see it manifest. That is the difference. 
here they studied it, the theory. There they are going to see it manifest. And seeing that truth manifesting itself in their mother, in her love, in her sacrifice, in her service, they should learn to expand their personality. That expansion of personality in a spiritual way will not come out of this Jnana Yoga which they have been trained in the Gurukulas. Now life is going to be practical because after studying at the home Gurukula, the mother's Gurukula, that expansion really becomes part of their life. And what is yoga? But expansion. The Vesti expands into the Samasti level. You're making use of our body, our mind, our intellect. Isn't it? So all these are available at home. Mother Deva Bhava, making mother as a teacher. Enjoying her love centered in this oneness. In her sacrifice, she denies herself everything so that her husband and children will have everything best in the family. Service, the way a mother alone can do this service as none can. The great Shankaracharya we know, he comes back to his mother at her death time and there is a very beautiful Madhra Panchadam in which she, he says, you know, no one can repay the service which mother has given, carrying us for ten months. In the final stages, you know, it becomes such a weight. She cannot move properly, she cannot lie down properly, she cannot sit, she cannot work. And after that, the child is born with so much of pain. And after that, for one or two years, sharing her bed with the child, soaked in his urine. Mother, and he says, no man can repay the service of the mother. So all this, from where she learned, from where did she get? It comes to her spontaneously. I may call it, it is a matra yoga. This expansion, expansion means forgetting oneself in the service of others. Or maybe we can say, Seeing oneself in the others. That sort of a capacity of service which only a mother can own it. Unparalleled is the mother's capacity to love, to sacrifice and service. We have all heard about this story of this Solomon, you know, King Solomon. When child is brought with two mothers, both claiming that this child is mine, the king orders the child to be split into two. The false mother just listens to it, but the real mother says, No, please don't let my child be happy and alive, even if it is with another woman. So, so many stories and things are there in our Dihasas Puranas. So when we read these things, you know, we think that we are just stories. Oh, sometimes it happens somewhere, somewhere, sometime. It has no connection with us. No, they are all connected with us. It all shows how our mind should expand. And expand in such a way, it takes off from the egoistic self of I, my and mine and then takes on to a new dimension of awareness. 
so that only a mother can give and indian mothers are famous in all our literature puranas and itihasas we find this excellence of such motherhood sometimes when i talk of indian women i remember some special phrases from lalita sahasrama i mean there would not be any hindu who has not heard of the thousand names of divine mother in that there is a special word in the <clears throat> first shloka I mean, the whole shloka is important i will come to it but that particular word i am concerned with is deva karya samudya there is a special responsibility bestowed on women deva karya she is born to do deva karya deva karya is truth to be centered in truth and manifest in truth or we can say to be centered in divinity and manifest that divinity because it is only she who can transfer this practical now uh, practical awareness of truth to the next generation deva karya in sanatana dharma satya and dharma have to be transmitted from generation to generation through our words deeds everything through our life itself therefore each woman has a special responsibility she should understand she is born as a deva karya samudya but then how will he come to know of this responsibility so in the shloka itself comes the answer chida grikunda sambhuta this awareness comes to her not from her universal study universe studies or university degrees or research publications or anything like that this awareness comes to her through intuitively from within to some extent and by the experiences through which she goes through the sukha and dukha the trials and tribulations all these will be her teachers if she knows how to be centered in the self of truth awareness and when she becomes such a devakarya samudhyata what is the reward she gets she is not any more just a mother she becomes shri mata a mother in whom the best of everything is implanted she becomes a repository of all that is best her spiritual expansion raises her to a very very highly divine level shri mata i love that prayoga so much all of our great mothers not only in itihasas and puranas even from our contemporary literature a classical example i always quote is shri ram krishna's wife shri sarada a girl who had no knowledge no education nothing at all five year old girl getting married to a 23 year old priest but how sri ramakrishna developed in her this spiritual awareness 
this yoga of becoming a mother of the universe. Why, what a wonderful thing. First, she tells her, you have to be like my mother in the Nahabad. Look at her, the way she behaves, her daily activities, her mental condition, the love and sacrifice and service she offers. All that you learn from her and become in every sense a worldly perfect mother. But then that is not all. You have to combine your Sri Shakti with the Madri Shakti and being my wife, you have to combine it with the Dharma Shakti. That is why Devaka is Samudhyata. Sri Ramakrishna elevates Sri Sarada from being a little uneducated girl, illiterate girl, to the position of Sri Mata. Through that Shorishi Puja, he confers on her this wonderful spiritual awareness of the divinity within. And she becomes aware of the divinity within and realizes it is the same that is there in her husband and master. And it is her duty to keep that divinity ever resplendent in her thought, word and actions, in her love, in her sacrifice, in her service. When such a thing happens, There is no need to take a guidebook to learn about woman's empowerment. It comes automatically to her. So he Hridasa Srama tells, such a Sri Mata, an empowered mother, a mother empowered with her truth awareness, her spiritual expansion, she becomes Maharaji. She will be adored and worshipped by the members of the family. In good old days, the head of the family was of course a father, but the real head was a mother. She had love for everybody, especially when we had joint families and all that. At least some of us may remember our past days when our mothers were so glorious in their life, behavior, not necessarily in the so-called education which blows up the ego of the woman, but they all were very naturally aware of the spiritual capacity Spiritual awareness was blossoming in them. And there is a oneness of understanding, oneness, universal oneness. Atmaikya, Kyatyavalkya tells Maitreyi, true love means seeing oneself in the others. In the Kapilopadesha in Bhagavata, Kapila tells mother, when the mother is unhappy that the son is leaving, he tells her, Adhamam sarva bhūteshu khatatmanam kutālayam arhaye tānamānabhyam maitriya abhinna chakshusha. That is a key word in there. Abhinna chakshusha. A mother must have a bhinna chakshu. If he has, she has ten children, she has equal love for all. She may express it in different ways suiting the character of each child. But her mind will be always filled with the same quantity and quality of love for her children. So that makes a woman 
see Maharakti. As I said, even if the father is the ruler of the family, mother is the empress of the family. It is her love and affection which holds the family together, which sees to it that nobody suffers, nobody is lacking in something, whether it is love or any other thing, care, food, clothing, shelter. And what is the next elevation of her? Srimad Simha Saneshwari. Such a woman becomes adored by the whole humanity. That is what Sri Sharada starts as a little village girl. Today she is adored as a Divine Mother, the Holy Mother. In all the Ramakrishna Sharada ashramas, the pride of place goes to a photograph of Mother Sharada, especially in the dining hall. Because sitting her there, she takes care to see that nothing is lacking. Every child is taken care of. So Simha she becomes adored. What more empowerment does a woman need? The self-effacement. You know, there is a very beautiful speech made by Swami Ranganathan and Viji Maharaj. I am tempted to read a portion of that talking about truth in human relationships and the mother's place in it. He says, the increasing liberation of one's deeper self in the context of marriage is what is proposed by Hindu thought. So far as woman is concerned, this is achieved by the wife growing into the mother. That is what we have been discussing now. Not merely, even necessarily biologically, but certainly spiritually. And Swamiji underlines his words. Huh? Motherhood is a spiritual transformation of wifehood. In our modern terms we can say motherhood is the perfect empowerment of a woman. The wife may and does demand and take, but the mother feels it her privilege to give. She is the example of self-transcendence through self-effacement. The spiritual value transcends the biological and even the social and finds expression in an idea of motherhood where love, sacrifice and service break the barriers of family, race and creed and assume a universal aspect. If such mothers were not available in the Hindu tradition, I wonder whether our great seers would have conceived of the idea of Vasudheva Kudumbaka. It is only here we can think of that. The spiritual expansion of motherhood to cover the whole of this universe. It's only in this Pune Bhumi of ours we can think of such a thing. So that is why the spiritual empowerment of woman what does it really mean? We must think about it. We'll come to that finally. Now, all this concern was the science of being a woman. Now comes the art of being a woman. That is, this truth which is within her now must take the practical aspects in the each and every action she does, there should be this sort of an expression. Probably that is why Kapila Vasudeva told, told Mother Devahuti 
ಮೈತ್ರಿಯ ಅಭಿನ್ನ ಚಕ್ಷುಸ ದಾನ ಮಾನಭ್ಯಾಂ ಮೈತ್ರಿಯ ಅಭಿನ್ನ ಚಕ್ಷುಸ ಎ ವುಮನ್ಸ್ ಡೇ ಟು ಡೇ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಮೀಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಇಂಟರಾಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಶಿಪ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ದಿ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಮೋಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಹರ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಮೈತ್ರಿಯ there should be friendliness at every point maitriya dana mana abhyam somewhere you may have to give something to help somebody some sometimes you have to say a few kind words and anyway somebody is in a little depressed a child has come after not getting enough mark not full a plus only 3 or 4 a plus he may go and jump into a river and kill him, uh, himself at that time mana mana bhya console the child with the correct interpretation of life give and take of life and then console that child giving him the proper elevation enhancement in his courage self can self confidence dana mana abhyam maitriya dana mana abhyam abhinna chakshush there should not be any difference that you are superior i am inferior you belong to that caste i belong to you no know, a mother should never express again sardamani is a classical example of <clears throat> how whatever we had been this woman's empowerment we could see expressed in a life of a very very ordinary looking woman who became a divine mother so that is the real empowerment which we can so such a person what happens to that she transformed every little act of hers into an art what is the quality of that art transfusing with love and her sense of sacrifice and service when each and every action of ours bears the insignia of love sacrifice and service then it is a great art of a living example of an art that is how the signs of being a woman centered in the spiritual awareness of truth and then blossoming forth outside reacting with the world in the awareness of oneness depicting it in the thoughts words and deeds that is the woman's real empowerment and how can it be brought out that will be another question now isn't it so we may can they has given us by karma yoga or dhyana yoga <coughs> karma yoga or bhakti yoga jnana yoga raja yoga by one or more or all of them all of them are there in a woman all these are playing their own part to bring out the wholesomeness of womanhood the perfection in human womanhood the divinity of human uh, womanhood she starts with her karma yoga her all karmas are transformed into sacrifice and service so they assume the characteristic of yajna so yajna swarupini she becomes yajna swarupini that yajna bhavana dominates in her thought words and actions she becomes yajna swarupini and in bhakti her own children have taught her different grades of love different expressions of love eh? different ways of tackling the love right? all the different aspects of love and now all she has to do is 
just directed towards her Ishta Devata. Or her love for the Ishta Devata becomes manifest in her behavior with the children. So bhakti on, always is part of a woman's life. She need not differentiate. Bhakti yoga is part of her very being. Then, what about the real Raja Yoga? Without Raja Yoga, <coughs> no other yoga is possible, is it? Controlling the mind in the proper way, controlling the, giving the body enough uh, rhythm in its actions. From morning 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock, a mother starts getting up and preparing the food and bathing the children and getting the things ready to send the help. That itself is a great yoga. If you can really watch, they don't have to do Surya Samskars or any other things. Sometimes, you know, when some things fall from my hand, I have to bend and take it. In these old days, I feel I cannot do yoga in the yoga class, but Bhagavan is making me do the yoga. So many things will fall from my hand, so I have to bend up and take it. So, it's a very beautiful concept that each and every moment of yours is ordained by God himself to be a yoga. So, without that yoga, you can't be chitta vritti nirodha. Sometimes, Husbands, other people may behave in a very funny way. Oh, Holy Mother's life is full of that. Her family people were all half mad. So she has so much of trouble, but not a word of admonition. Not a word did she utter against anybody or making any people quarrel among themselves or feel inferior. Every time words, thoughts and deeds, they were all chiseled. Chiseled in the listing uh, of truth. So there was no contradiction. Pooja Ranganathanji ji used to say, once he used a bad word and his mother happened to listen to it and he called him and said, you know who sits on your tongue? It is Goddess Saraswati. So if you use a bad word, it reflects, goes back to her. So hereafter, See to it that no bad word comes to you. See, when you are in the self-realization mode, seeing the truth everywhere, seeing your own Atma everywhere, then how can you use bad words? You can scold people if they are wrong, you need not use bad words, wrong expressions, hurting expressions. You can be careful. Consolingly, you can correct your children. So all that becomes mother's characteristics, isn't it? So the art of being a woman, we can read Sarada Devi's life. Another great thing we have to remember at this particular age of ours is our Indian seers saw in woman a replica of nature itself. So for them, it is a woman who was in front of them representing the qualities of nature. The beauty, the harmony, the interrelationships in the nature, 
interconnectedness, interrelatedness, interdependence in the nature, they saw it all reflected in their wife, in their mother. That is how woman, everything that was beautiful in nature in our Indian tradition, we refer to them as mother. River Ganga is mother. Earth is mother. Isn't it? In that way, almost, you know, that motherliness transcends human, they say. Even a cat and a little kitten, you will find a beautiful expression of mother. So everywhere, the divine part of motherhood, that came to be appreciated. That is what in, we lack in today's educated, the so-called empowered women. They forget this art and science of being the woman. Physically, they empower themselves to become so and so. Materially, they acquire wealth and become so and so, great ladies. Then, in some art, some culture, they become. But that is all empowerment which are of very short duration. The empowerment the Indian women gave to the Indian heritage is what has made Indian heritage so very glorious. So the need of the hour is to restore the balance of our great planet, Mother Earth. Where should we start? We should start from the very beginning. The act of balancing by recognizing and empowering a bolts of truth wherever we can locate them. In the love of the chaste woman for her husband, in the love and sacrifice of an unselfish mother, in the innocence of little children, as yet unspoiled by the evils of life, and in those rare men and women for whom truth is not a tool to play politics, but forms a value of life. That is the empowerment we have to bring back to our women. Then only we can move from fragmentation to holiness, from death to immortality, and from darkness to light. Therefore, the choice of empowerment at every level has to be spiritual, shifting emphasis from one's own little self and its interest to the welfare of the whole of humanity. This transfer of holistic feeling and action must start from home. Our home should become, our Vekanda Kendra model now is Amrita Kudumba. The understanding between the members of the family should be based on this awareness of the oneness of the truth and the behavior pattern which form follows out of this truth. This wisdom should reach the children through the love in the heart of the mother. Advaita Amrita Varshini. Each mother should become an Advaita Amrita Varshini. Let me conclude quoting myself. In 1993, I was speaking to such a, I exactly remember the title of the um, meeting which we had, conference. I was speaking in Chicago. At that time I said, the future of mankind, humankind, the future of humankind would undoubtedly be safer in the hearts of mothers 
than in the brain of fathers. That is why I am proud to be a woman belonging to a culture which gave the world the Maha Mantra, Matra Devo Bhava. Yogena Chittasya Patena Vacham Malam Sharirasya Chavaitya Kenam Yopakarotam Pravaram Muninam Patanjalim Pranjaliranam Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti Namaste Yoga is, a, is one of the greatest gifts which Bharat has given for the total welfare of humanity. In the same way, I would add that yoga is the best gift which a person can give to oneself for the integration of one's personality. Yoga can take care of our physical well-being, mental expansion, intellectual sharpness, and the increasing of spiritual welfare. Mother being the center of a home, if her health is perfect, <clears throat> It will, be, it will be reflected in the health of every member in the family. Therefore, if mothers insist on the whole family doing something or other of the yoga as a daily practice, then naturally one can eliminate from the family many, many problems, especially physical and mental level. Here we have four of our sisters demonstrating the very simple, elementary poses of the yoga, which every, everyone can accept and make it part of their daily routine. In the International Day of Yoga, women's empowerment has been taken as a special theme and in that yoga can wonderfully add much empowerment. Yoga fundamentally means expansion. The Vesti expands into the Samashti. And for that, whether it is Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Raja Yoga, they can all help to release the individual from the bondage of I, mine, my, different aspects of our egoistic personality. In this connection, I can't but pay my homage to the founder of Vivekananda Kendra, Swargiya Egnaji Rayanade, who made yoga compulsory for every Jeevan Vrati, so that he or she can take care of her health and wherever she goes to work, she can start spreading the message of yoga 
to the neighborhood. That is how Vivekananda Kendra has become a center for excellence for understanding the intricacies of yoga science. Vivekananda Kendra is especially happy to play an important role in this scheme of popularization of yoga and I wish all the members of the India <coughs> Yoga Association best of health, best of everything. May Guru Patanjali be with us providing us physical, mental and intellectual health. Thank you. Today, we will be seeing basic postures starting with the breathing exercises. Hands in and out breathing. These breathing exercises enhance our lung capacity improve our oxygenation, reduce our mental tension and a better posture it helps. Very simple exercise which can be done slowly. The mental benefits, stress reduction, improved focus, emotional regulation, enhanced relaxation. Now we will see the hand stretch breathing. Just like the previous one, this also helps lung capacity, improved circulation, increased flexibility and muscle relaxation. Of course, they have the mental benefits are also there, stress reduction improved focusing and emotional regulation. The basic aspect is doing it as slowly as you can.
three types of breathing is done the first one is the forward and the second one is about 45 degrees upwards each exercise can be done 3 to 5 times The entire body gets stretched up, improving the blood circulation. Now we will see the Surya Namaskar, which is performed to the sun, offering our gratitude and love for the life-giving energy. The sun represents the energy, power, and vitality. As the Surya Nadi or Sun Channel Ralang runs along the right side, we begin with the Surya Namaskar with our right leg first. It is practiced early in the morning hours. Many benefits such as physical and mental strength, better command over your body. calmness of the mind balanced energy and inner peace which is a very powerful technique to make one more mindful with a regular practice it increases our awareness forming a deeper connection between the body the breath and the consciousness initially we can start with 3 to 5 cycles as a beginner and slowly we can increase it up to 12 now we will see some of the asanas the first one is trikona asana also called as a triangle posture this helps strengthening and lengthens the hamstring and groin area while also opening our shoulders and stretching the hips trikona in sanskrit is called triangle asana means posture now we move on to the parshakona asana also known as extended side angle posture is a dynamic yoga posture that offers numerous benefits for women this pose involves a deep stretch and strengthening of various muscles enhance both physical and mental well-being shashankasana known as the rabbit posture rabbits are known for their alertness agility and flexibility practicing this posture helps body 
the qualities of rabbit and let their inner self connectedness with the nature it is excellent for clearing emotional and mental clutter this also helps strengthening your back now we move on to the complementary posture ushtrasana now we will see the complementary posture ushtrasana which is a very powerful back bending posture and reduces it helps in reducing our fat in thighs opens up the hips stretching the deep hip flexors expands our abdominal region by improving our digestion and elimination improves our posture opens the chest improving the respiration it relieves even the lower back pain now we move on to the lying down postures prone posture bhujangasana bhujanga is known as cobra asana means posture is a foundational back bending posture this pose which involves lying on the stomach and lifting the chest helps to stretch the various parts of the body the complementary posture shalabhasana is complementary to bhujangasana known as the locust posture involving the stomach and lifting the legs and chest up the floor engaging various muscles to strengthen the body and we move on to the postures lying on your back supine posture viparita karani viparita karani almost like a sarvangasana with little variation in the final posture helps in regenerating the overall health the back with the leg legs extended virtually put up allowing gravity to the gentle reverse the flow of the blood and the lymphatic fluid the complementary posture setu bandhasana Setu means bridge asana posture is a key posture that offers balancing the or increasing the effects of viparita karani especially for the women the menstrual relief hormonal balance and a reproductive health and especially the low back problems this posture helps now we move on to the pranayama the nadi shuddhi pranayama is known as alternative nostril breathing or anuloma viloma 
is a powerful yogic breathing technique and offers numerous benefits. This involves alternating the breath between the left and the right nostril using this specific hand position known as Anunasika Mudra. This helps hormonal balance and bringing overall balance exhaling through left and inhaling through left exhaling through right and inhaling through now we'll conclude with a prayer Yogena cittasya patena vacham Malam sharirasya cha vaidya kenam Yopakarutam pravaram muninam Patanjalim pravaram